compare them in some way, bound one by another. OK, why is that true? So this is a comparison test. Here we go. The first thing in comparison test is let's compare uh, a series A with a series CN, A sub n and C sub n. Suppose A sub n and absolute value are bounded by the C sub n's. And we actually only care if n is large enough. In other words, whether a series converges or not, would you agree, doesn't really depend on the first few terms? Doesn't depend, right? Because it'll just shift everything. Um, so we, if you know that a n is bounded by c n for n large enough, and the, the series c sub n converges, then what can we conclude? A n converges. OK. Statement B is not uh, is similar. Suppose A n is bigger than D sub n, and they're both bigger than 0. And the thing I want to point out here is you have to be careful when you apply this theorem. Notice I'm requiring them both series here to be non-negative. So if a n's bigger than d n, is there anything I can say about a n if I know something about d n? Good. And suppose this is true for n large enough. So a lot of you are saying, OK, if the sum of the d n, the d n series, diverges, then a n diverges. This is one of the most useful tests for convergence of series. And in fact, it follows from, again, from our criterion. Let's see why. Proof. Mm. Let's do A, proof of part A. Well, since a, a since C n converges, we have a Cauchy criterion, right? Cauchy criterion says since C n converges, for every epsilon there's an n such that when the terms are big enough, the tails are small, less than epsilon tails of the C n, right? Oh, okay. Which means for every epsilon bigger than zero. Now, of course, the epsilon that we're going to be dealing with is, what are we trying to show? We're trying to show that the a n converges, yeah? So I'm going to use the Cauchy criterion for the, the a sub n. And I need to find, my goal is to find a what? For every epsilon, find an, an n that works for that. So maybe I should start this th proof off here. Given epsilon bigger than 0. Um, We'll show. We'll use a Cauchy criterion to show the a n converges. Okay. So actually, this is not a sentence, is it? I should say fix epsilon bigger than zero. Period. Since the c n converges for this epsilon, there exists an n such that m and n bigger than big N implies. Some sum of the CKs is less than epsilon for K from M to N. True? Now, what I want to do is show the same criterion for the A's. And I need to find a big N that works for this epsilon and with AK here. <coughs> <coughs> but what N should work? Excuse me. Sorry for coughing into the video. Sorry. Just got a cold. Um, OK. Yeah, so which one works? Well, certainly this n works. And 
uh, as long as this condition also holds too, right? So we're in good shape. So um, let's, uh, <coughs> okay, so there exists an n such that mn bigger than big N is less than this. I guess because of the n large enough condition, this thing holds for some, let's call this n1. This condition holds for some n bigger than n2. So maybe I'll say, say n bigger than n2. So I'll let n be what? Yeah, how about the maximum of those two places in the sequence, those two indices? Yay. And then for this n, for n little n and n bigger than big N, what do we see? Well, we see the sum of the A sub Ks help. Why? Okay, so I need to relate this absolute value to one with the absolute value around the AKs before uh, and the sum outside, which I can do by the triangle inequality. Hurrah, I'm not writing the indices here, but you know what they are. Ah, triangle inequality right here. And then this is nicely bounded by the CNs. And this, I know, is small. If this absolute value is small, well then this thing is less than epsilon for sure. As desired. Okay? Question. Uh, so it, th the question was about the indices, when to use k or n. It doesn't really matter, except that I've chosen to use k in this condition because uh, k, k is the index because I'm going from m to n, uh, and I've used those letters here. But you, of course, you can use any letter. But I've just notationally done that to, to remind you that I'm, I'm not, I don't want the same index here name as, uh, as I've used here. Oh, this should be a K. Thank you. That's, that's your question, isn't it? And I, I didn't write out all the, the indices here, but you know what they go from, from M to N. Okay. Excellent question. Other questions? What have we just done? We've, used the, we've proven the comparison test using the Cauchy criteria. I've just shown all the, ma all the major theorems of most of the major <laughs> theorems about series are really uh, convergence uh, tests for series boil down to uh, nice proofs with the Cauchy criterion. <coughs> why is this thing, s why is this thing, its tail small? Because they're bounded by these things and those things have small tails. Okay, what about B? Part B. Hmm, well, let's see. Jeremiah's thinking part B looks a lot like part A. But somehow flipped around, yes? Well, let's see. So I have some, I know something about the DNs, and I want to conclude something about the ANs. Wouldn't you agree that I could just use part A? To do part B? Why? I'll use part A and noting that if uh, uh, the contrapositive of part A is if AN converges, so does BN, right? So does the sum of the DN. That's the same statement, isn't it? To say DN diverges implies AN diverges. The same as saying AN converges implies DN converges. But now, how do I show that if AN converges, DN converges? Well, DN is smaller than.